Hello, all my beauties and brainies, and welcome to um, this video. I was really nervous about doing this video because I feel like it will be extremely hard to film. So, um, I almost didn't do it. Um, but then as a survivor of childhood abuse, of child abuse, um, I got so frustrated watching other people's reactions of um, Ruby Frankie and Eight Passengers because to me it was coming off as very like this is drama and this is kind of like oh kind of like in a gossiping manner and to me you know um certain individuals I felt like kind of watered down the situation or kind of um downplayed the effects of childhood trauma and um how it really stays with you even after you're out of that situation and just how really screwed up and messed up the situation is i do not see childhood trauma as gossip i don't see childhood drama um childhood trauma excuse me as drama this is a real life issue that um no child should ever have to go through and i think in the case of ruby frankie it is so outlandish and so crazy because um it should have been stopped way 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 before it did which we'll get on to later and so um that's where i'm kind of coming from and why i kind of wanted to add my voice to this issue um and I hope by having a really uncomfortable conversation uh, um, now and kind of reluctantly um, opening the door to a past I would rather forget. I'm hoping that people, even if you haven't gone through childhood trauma, I'm hoping that this video kind of helps... Um, Hopes you kind of gain a little window into the experience and I hope that it will create conversations in how we can prevent the Ruby Frankie situation or any other child abuser situation from ever happening again. So that is where I'm coming from. Um, I did already post a video about family, family vlogging in general because I do think that even if you're not a child abuser, I do think that there are some family vloggers that kind of extort their kids and kind of use their kids as like cash cows, which I think is the same situation. Like, I think Ruby Frankie did, but I think she also has like her own separate issues as well. So I have a whole video talking about that as well um and kind of talking about like what is acceptable and good family vlogging versus like i think we kind of need to move away from um oh geez okay so so a little just kind of understanding of where i'm coming from so for me, I'm not only extremely frustrated that um, child abuse was allowed to happen in general, I think that's just unacceptable, but I think especially what was really disturbing to me as someone who did not watch Ruby Frankie and then kind of um, learned about her through the whole court case, um, what really frustrated me is that um they were showing clips of ruby frankie's videos um where she admits to forms of child abuse for example um she took her kids um bed away for several months took away his door um and while the court case revealed um torture that we did not know previously she did admit to doing things that honestly should have had DP, uh, DCFS called on her and to me it is so insulting as someone who has gone through childhood trauma and as someone who has worked with kids and has 
reported child abuse and saw authority do absolutely nothing to help these kids and to make sure that these kids are safe. It is so frustrating that Ruby Frankie's kids had reported to the police before um, before the whole court case and before the police finally did anything. Ruby Frankie's kids had reported Ruby for child abuse um, and that Ruby had talked on her YouTube channel with millions of followers admitting to forms of child abuse that absolutely nothing was done. Also, another point I wanted to make in regards to taking away the, away the bed and the door frame and why this is so important in the context of abuse is that um, in, a, in an abusive situation, um, especially a home ab abusive situation where your parent is abusing you, your room is your sanctuary. It's your castle. It's your... Um, boundary between you and your abuser and so it's the point it's the place where you can take your armor off and and breathe for two seconds you know um it's where especially so like in my situation with my um, abuser my parents was very against any sort of emotion it was seen very much as weakness and any emotion was seen with extreme penalty extreme prejudice and so the place where the only place where you could show emotion is in your bedroom under the covers throwing in some blankets into your mouth so that you are not making any noise and that's the only place where you can let it all go i know some people said like oh you can do that in the bathroom um with a family member with a family of seven people the bathroom is always needed so you will be found out there and eight passengers is also a big family so i think that they would have the same issue so uh, your bedroom is like a place where you can get like a break from your abuse and you can say well Ruby can just open the door and can just you know go in and abuse her child and that's fair but like those few seconds of someone having to open the door to um verbally attack you is enough time for especially if you've been in abuse for a while to put your armor back on and so having a door it provides some sense of peace and a break also taking away the bed is also why it is so um important in the context of abuse if you are being abused by a family member especially the parent the only break that you have from abuse like where you can totally leave the scene is through your dreams so in the eight passenger sense um he was homeschooled like all the kids were homeschooled and so they don't really get a break from ruby so the only time that they actually leave the scene of abuse is through their dreams and so to disrupt somebody's sleep by taking away their bed taking away their door it is taking away any the little 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 sense of security that they have you're taking that away from them i remember so vividly um when um i remember so vividly um at night just staying awake and just like listening listening to make sure that he went to bed and i'm safe and i'm good and we're done for the night we're done for the day we can be at peace now and to take away somebody's bed and someone's door especially the door you are you are giving them so much anxiety 
that they that the little little shield that they have for abuse is completely taken away it's also really important to note that um not everything that Ruby did was something that she declared on YouTube, but a lot of it was. And for me in my situation, like I didn't want to show emotion because my um my parent got really it was something that would set him off. And for Ruby Frankie's kids as a YouTuber, anytime that they showed emotion or were bad, she took the camera and stuck it in their face. And in abusive situations, um, something that really convinces you that if you say anything, like, no one will believe you is when your parent or whoever your abuser is does something aggressive or intense um, in a more public setting and people don't do anything. Or when your abusive parent does something bad and your other parent is there and they don't do anything. So what... In the e-passengers sense, every time that Ruby Frankie admits to abusing her kids and the YouTube community don't care or actually applaud Ruby by giving her likes and a positive applauding comments and subscribe and she has millions of subscribers, it's telling her kids, no one's gonna believe you. No one cares. This is an abuse. This is just parenting it's fine shut up and take it that's what you're telling her kids and so and it's also telling other kids who've been in abuse or are being abused that they're not being abused just be quiet sit down and take it that's what you're teaching them and while we are now prosecuting ruby there's already so much damage that has been done and while ruby made those decisions to be abusive and to torture her kids the youtube community decided to do nothing about it and to actually applause this horrible situation and parenting style and the same way my fear is that ruby frankie um has already taught way too many parents to be abusive and call it their parenting style and i am afraid that even though ruby frankie is now being um taken to jail you've already told so many survivors of abuse that abuse is just a parenting style and you've taught so many parents to be abusive to their kids so child abuse is not something that is unique to ruby frankie and so gossiping gossiping after it comes out that somebody is abusing her kids is not unique to ruby frankie it's not unique to family vloggers um i not only lived through um, child abuse I also worked with kids and met kids that were also um, at the time going through child abuse and over and over and over and over and over and over again we as um, as staff had the opportunity to work to make sure that these kids were in a safe environment and instead of being and instead of being empathetic individuals who speak up to protect others instead over and over again it was just members of staff gossiping about parents and gossiping about these horrible situations instead of doing even the smallest thing to make sure that these kids are safe I worked with a kid um we he came to pick up his kid and um we hadn't moved the sign that we were going to be doing outside um 
like pickup instead of indoor pickup. I, I had worked at a summer camp during this time and he was angry and raging and screaming for, I mean, geez, like a good 30 minutes. And it escalated to the point where we actually took all the kids inside because it became a situation where leadership thought that it was an unsafe environment for kids. They made the right call. What is frustrating about that situation was then there was gossiping about this parent that he was angry and raging and volatile, but there was never even the smallest question, the smallest investigation to make sure that this child is safe in this environment. If you recognize that children are not safe around this volatile parent, why is there not any sort of investigation to make sure that his own child is safe and I feel like just explaining the situation without like um like I don't have a video or like a visual proof of it I feel like it will come across as like oh well parents can be mad and you know parents can lose their cool sometimes too and I would agree but how he was just screaming and raging and all of this it was more than just having a bad day. I've also had situations where it's a lot more black and white. Um, I worked at a daycare. There was a kid not under my group. I at that point was a floater. Um, but one of the kids, he was um, very, very pale and had red hair. And I'm just pointing out that he has red hair because He's not just like white like I am, like he was pale pale. He had a scar on the side of his nose. His mother said it was a sunburn. What child do you know that gets a sunburn at the side of his nose? His cheeks weren't sunburned, her his arms weren't sunburned. He was pale, 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 pale. The only point that he had a scar on was the side of his nose. And his his teachers, his, his um, daycare teachers, knew that his mom was lying and instead of doing any sort of investigation to make sure this child was safe, they're just gossiping about it. And it was very clear that it was not a sunburn because we work with kids and it was 100% a rug burn. But instead of investigating and making sure that this child is safe and reporting it or doing anything, instead we're just gonna sit around and gossip. Because that's, that's what we're gonna do. I worked with um, another kid he was nonverbal autistic. And I'm only mentioning that he's nonverbal autistic just to kind of point out that he has even less agency than um, a child who is not nonverbal autistic because he can't communicate with you about his experiences. Um, his mom had bragged to the director of this daycare and to his daycare teacher that she would duct tape him to the chair at home and force feed him until he puked. She was bragging about it. It's okay that I duct tape my child at home. That's fine. And instead of the parent, or instead of the teachers, once again, doing an investigation or reporting the mother to DCFS, they're just gossiping again. This time I did know about DCFS and so I called DCFS that night. They said I could not make a report because I didn't know the child's last name and I didn't know the child's address. So I went to the daycare the next day and I, um, there's like this like paper that had like the kid's name on it so then you could kind of like um, check mark who was there for the day. And I looked at that, there wasn't the last name. I, I did that first because I, if the teacher is gossiping, I didn't think that the teacher could be convinced to make a report to DCFS because that's what she should have done in the first place. Anyway, I then talked to her and tried to convince her to do the right thing and to report to DCFS to make sure that this child was safe. She just kept saying, I don't know, I don't know. And in the way that females say no by saying, I don't know. So then I talked to another teacher, tried to convince her to make a report. She also said no. So then I called TCFS that night and said, hey, I don't know the child's last name. I don't know the address, 
but I do know that they're the only child at this daycare with that name. If you go to the daycare and you say, I'm here to investigate this child, they will know exactly who you're talking about. And I said, I don't know the child's address, but I know the daycare that they're at every single day. Here's the address where you can go. This is the name that you're, you can ask about and you can investigate this child because this child is being abused and I need you to do your job and I need you to investigate. And she went to investigate. I was off the next day. I don't remember why. The um, DCFS officer, I don't know. Are they an officer? I don't know. The DCFS agent officer, whatever their title is. She calls me the next night. Um, and she says, I went to the daycare. The director and the teacher both said that never happened. I said, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And she's like, I asked them. They said they have no idea what they're talking about. The child seems safe. And she was actually mad at me because she thought I had made a, a false report for some reason. Um, and then um, I actually also got fired the next day. So it's really 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 frustrating that once again instead of talking about child abuse and seeing it as child abuse it is so frustrating that once again we're just gossiping about it like we don't we don't care it's fine it's whatever it's whatever it's so frustrating it's so frustrating um so that's my first issue about the uh, about the Ruby Frankie situation. Also, um, I think it's also important to note that Ruby Frankie's one of Ruby Frankie's older kids also reported Ruby Frankie, and uh, enforcement law enforcement did nothing. From my from my understanding, I don't think they even did an investigation, um, which is absolutely crazy absolutely crazy so in ruby especially as a youtuber ruby frankie had admitted on her channel that she took her child's bed for months and months and months and months and also took his door so if law enforcement or dcfs either one did a hospitality check and looked in the child's room i mean there is no bed. I mean, that is about as black and white of child abuse as you can get. I mean, there's all kinds of forms of child abuse that are a lot easier to hide from DCFS. I mean, there is no bed. That's about as black and white in your face. Like, I mean, I feel like that's as bold, highlighted, underlined as you can get that there's child abuse going on here. So it is very, very, very frustrating in that way um i i don't i don't understand why the police did not do anything i feel like you can watch eight passengers for about two minutes until you're about to puke because of her, her parenting style if you want to call it that parenting style and i also just want to note that people call it her parenting style and um I just want to say as someone who grew up in a very volatile um abusive situation when you have a parent that takes um discipline to an extreme you are not learning don't do this do this you are just learning to be afraid that's what you're really learning I think it's even parenting i would honestly disagree with because i don't think you're parenting in any way just my point of view the next thing that i want to point out um is uh, ruby frankie's kid um the older kids report her to dcfs and i feel like when people hear that they see it as very black and white like okay ruby frankie's kids reported her law enforcement did nothing and then they move on to the next point but i do want to point out um when people talk about abuse they look at it in very like 
is small box charms um ruby frankie um abused her kids she honestly tortured her kids okay we're mad but i do want to say also that for ruby frankie's kid the older kids to um report her there is a lot of growth that you have to go through and a lot of healing that you have to go through before you are at a point to understand that you are being abused and to come to a point where you report your abuser so i'm just going to um tell this part from my own experiences ruby frankie's kids are ruby frankie's kids and i am myself um how they were manipulated is going to be different than how i was so i'm just sharing this as just kind of a window into understanding abuse so for me i was abused by my dad and like so many other younger girls little girls our dads are our superman they're our superman they're our superhero they are we look up to them like no one else and when your superman suddenly becomes volatile and angry and raging superman does not superman is good he's not bad and so if superman is angry and raging then you or i must have done something to make superman angry superman Superman protects the innocent. And so if Superman is not protecting me, then there must be something wrong with me. Superman, Superman can't be Lex Luthor. And so if Superman does anything wrong, anything horrible, then what did I do? What did I do? to make Superman mad. Superman defeats villains. And so if Superman is defeating me and destroying me, then I must be a villain. There is so much manipulation and abuse that in so many situations, victims, survivors will never see their abusers as abusers. To the point where victims, survivors are actually often manipulated into protecting their own abuser. So for Ruby Frankie's kids to speak out against their mom, I just honestly want to applaud them and just give a moment to say honestly good on you that is so much growth in a family environment where there is abuse speaking out against your abuser is often um you're so you're so taught that speaking out against your abuser is betraying your family and would you betray your family? There is such a environment of protecting your abuser. A lot of times it's holding on to what is good about your abuser. Because a lot of times in abuse, whatever the form is, it's actually someone you know. I mean, especially in child abuse, but abuse in general as well. It is people that you know and people that you love that abuse you. And so a lot of times in abuse, you are manipulated into holding on to the good and believing that if you just don't, if you just don't piss them off, you just, you don't set them off, you, you, 
you're just good enough you just do blank that you can have the person that you're holding on to for example my dad is an incredible hard worker my dad owned a small business a used bookstore and he worked incredibly hard he read all kinds of books to know like what type of books to um to sell and like what books were valuable especially like old books and which books aren't my dad worked six days a week um and then on the seventh day he was still working even though the bookstore wasn't open and would restock and do like admin stuff and all kinds of stuff like that my dad worked incredibly hard incredibly hard and i will never ever take that away from him however that that's what we're holding on to and that's what we're believing that you know he's a good guy and he's amazing but where we're kind of where we're kind of getting muddled is just because someone has good in them does not mean that they're a good person and just because someone is you know this is amazing about this person you know add blank that doesn't mean that they're not an abuser people are so black and white about abusers of like an abuser must be this like grizzly bear terrorizing but abusers have these good qualities about them and they're just not choosing to be a good person and so when people are in abuse abusive situations they're like well this person can't be abusive because of blank they have this one quality or these few qualities that are amazing and are good at the end of the day though they're still abusive just because you have some good qualities about you does not make you a good person and does not mean that you're not an abusive person you can have good things about you and still be bad and i think honestly that's also probably why um, law enforcement didn't do anything about Ruby Frankie because they probably had that same ideology of Ruby Frankie was probably really amazing and awesome and friendly and nice and she's a wonderful woman and all of this to law enforcement because they're in a, a place of power. That does not take away from that she's still abusive to her kids. You can be and and people have this idea also with bullying like oh this kid is so amazing he's so nice he can never be a bully someone can be the most amazing person to you and still go home and abuse their kids and people also have this i think this is also what happened in ruby frankie's case because she also is from a small town people in small towns have this idea that um abuse and all kinds of blank bad stuff um only happen in big cities and so oh child abuse doesn't happen here well it does it does or oh my gosh ruby frankie or my dad he's you know they're they're just strong christian people and therefore they can't be abusers there are abusers in every religion every race blank 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 every category well i guess certain ages are not abusers um but every section of humanity there are child abusers so that's where people are just confused and they're just putting the little blinders on it's like what i was the examples i was giving with um the summer camp and the the daycare there is no child abuse here there is no they just cover their eyes and they choose not to see and by you deciding not to see you are letting a child remain in an abusive situation so good job on you